There are a few sites more satisfying than a beautiful garden. But what do you do if your outdoor space isn't quite so picture perfect and you're short on time? Well, meet the instant gardener. Ta da! Danny Clark is an expert at transforming gardens. Here's my plan I'm going to rejuvenate this garden. Each time, our gardening guru will show you how to create gorgeous garden makeovers. That's the art of garden design, delegation. Each transformation will be packed with brilliant ideas and tips. It makes it easier to cut through. To help you get to grips with your own outdoor space. It does feel unnatural, but take your time. With his magical ideas. These flowers will look like they're floating in amongst the grasses. And advice on spending wisely on a budget. That's why Danny makes me bring a list. OK. Oh, my word. This is amazing. And because he's the instant gardener, everything you see will happen in just one day. Oh, my oh. gosh. That looks so much better. This time, we're in the Hampshire town of Basingstoke. Originally a medieval market town, the population of modern Basingstoke has rocketed to nearly 90,000. With many high-rise apartment blocks and busy roads, space for a garden in this bustling town is a hard-won and cherished commodity. In town, space is at a premium, so gardens aren't always where you might expect to find them. Today's outdoor space is a few stories up, and it's left its owner, who's taking her first steps on the property ladder, more than a little bit daunted. I don't want to stand on that, it's too good. Hello! Hi. I'm Helen. Hi, nice to meet you. I'm Amy. Thanks for having Hello. us. I love your doormat. Thank you. <laughs> cute. Amy Joliffe is a 27-year-old primary school teacher from Wales who has recently settled in Basingstoke. After a long and demoralising battle to find her first teaching job, Amy now works very long hours. Like many other key workers, she's also struggled to get her foot on the property ladder. But finally, Amy has been able to buy a part share in her first home, a new build flat in the suburbs. However, to do that, she's had to sacrifice the idea of a dream garden. In fact, she's been lucky to get what she has, and to transform it will be a tall order. Amy's so-called garden is in fact a roof terrace. Measuring around 24 square metres, it's only an eighth of the size of the average UK garden. The terrace is paved with bog-standard concrete paving stones, which, according to Amy's lease, we can't alter in any permanent way. It's bounded by glass partitions with brushed metal railings and brick walls on two sides, which, again, we can't modify permanently. There's also a curious window-like opening. It's got a great view, but creates a terrific draught. Amy's desperate to turn her terrace into a cosy, relaxing outdoor room, but so far all she's managed to do is install this rather ugly storage unit and plant a few pots. It's a blank canvas and it has some restrictions, but there's loads we can do to turn this terrace into the talk of the town. How are you? Good. What a great little space this is. It's a great space, especially on a day like today. Definitely. And how long have you lived here? I've lived here for nearly four years. So is this a flat that you own outright? Um, I part buy, part rent. I'm on the professional scheme that came out about four years ago. And I own sort of just over 50% of the property and I pay rent to a company who own, who own the rest of it. So is the aim to own it outright eventually? It is. Um, within the next three years, I'm hoping to own 100%. What are the limitations of making over a roof garden and one that you don't yet fully own outright? I think it's the structural issues. We can't drill into the outside walls. You can't sort of get out onto the roof. And there's some health and safety issues there. The stuff we put in here we can't be too heavy. Otherwise, the guy below will have a load of um, ceiling on his head. Having walked through your house, it's immaculate and gorgeous and very colourful and there's a lot of character in there. That's not reflected out here, though, without being rude, is no. it? No, it's not. It's very bland. It, it doesn't say me at all. I've managed in the last sort of three and a half years to really make my home bright, colourful, represent me okay. completely. 
this isn't. So we need to put a bit of you into this space, you don't do. we? Yes. Now I want to be able to bring friends and family out to this area and enjoy a barbecue and have just a nice meeting place rather than being stuck in, in the living room. Danny, this is a blank canvas, but it's a roof terrace, so there are positives and negatives. How are you feeling about transforming this space? I've got a big confession to make. I've never done a roof garden before. This is going to be a first for me. So, Amy, wish me luck. Good luck. Are you green-fingered? Do you do much gardening? Not really. No, I attempt, I've attempted and ended up killing everything. Yeah, I hadn't I've... noticed, Amy. No, I hadn't not noticed. at all. <laughs> <laughs> everything just dies. It doesn't matter how hard I okay. try. I am quite a busy person. I start early in the morning and I do sometimes finish 8 o'clock at night. OK. When I come home, I enjoy just sort of sitting down and just relaxing. And I do actually forget about watering the plants sometimes. You're dedicated in the classroom. Oh. How would your friends describe your dedication in the garden? Yeah, that they think it's hysterical. Um, I had, I planted something just behind you and for the last year thought it was a lavender plant and then got told it was bluebells. <laughs> so, and that's the extent of my my gardening skills. I thought I was doing something right, thought it was a perfect flower. Yep, so I'm the laughing stock of my friends, I think, when it comes to gardening. Well, you'll be the laughing stock no more, because what we'll do, we'll put some plants in here. There's no such thing as no maintenance, but there is low maintenance. We'll get out of the way, let you crack on. Help is on its way. OK, and I've just got something for you, Helen, the usual. Oh, yeah. So, yes. a little shopping list, so if you can go enjoy yourself and... Um, I'll catch up with you later. While I whisk Amy away for a bit of R&R, &R, that's retail and research, Danny has only ten hours to transform her terrace. Basically, the outline has got to remain as it is. So, we can do stuff within the walls, but we can't fix anything to the walls, for example. So, anything we put in here has to be freestanding. Now, a very good design tip here is to look on the inside, see what you've got on the inside of your house and try and project that to the outside. I've been inside, I've had a look around and one of the first things I've noticed is that Amy likes bright colours. So I'm going to try and replicate that in this space. We've got to be very careful with the flooring because of the restrictions. Um, we can't paint it. We can clean it, which is good, so and that will make a huge difference. And once cleaned, Perhaps we'll put some sort of bright coloured matting down. For me, these small pots are a no-no. So we want to do something that's high impact. Maybe instead of lots of small pots, have maybe two or three large pots. I wouldn't make it too messy by having lots of different varieties. Less is more. So I'd be inclined just to put one variety of plant in each pot. Topiary, I mean, that comes to mind. Maybe an interesting shape, maybe a sphere or an oblong, something like that. The window, although it's great for viewing, it's a bit of a wind tunnel. So what we want to do is find a way of diffusing the wind, just slowing it down. Furniture-wise, again, we can't fix anything to the wall, so everything has to be freestanding. We'll put a bench over there and paint it so that it matches the flooring and in turn that will match what's going on inside Amy's flat and perhaps a bench over here and likewise that will be painted. Now the main advantage that we've got here because nothing's going to be fixed to this space so really this is an outside room which she can roll up and take with her. There's no hardcore digging to be done here. All it is is an insulation and you know what? I know just the man. Handyman AJ is on the case as always, and he's going to have his work cut out with all the furniture Danny's planning. Plus, Amy's mum and dad, Jane and Colin, have come all the way from Wales to help their daughter transform her roof space. Hello. Okay. Hi. Hello, Jane. Hello, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. All right, so what I need you to do is to scrub this patio area, yeah. OK? Yeah. Um, and the grass, if yeah, that's fine. OK. Yeah, no and uh, AJ, I've got a job for you, mate. I'm not scrubbing. I know you're not scrubbing. <laughs> oh. I wouldn't then ask you to scrub. That's all right. Then. But I need you to construct a couple of benches for me. OK. If that's OK. Yeah, that's it. Sounds now, good. Now, I want a bench in this, on this wall here. OK. About a metre and a half wide. But I'd like it to be quite deep. Okay. So maybe half a metre deep. Yeah. 
and it's going to have to be standalone, isn't it? Because we, we can't drill into these walls, can Absolutely, we? Absolutely, because there's rules and regulations here and we can't touch the walls. So if it can be standalone, which would be great. Okay. And that would be great for Amy because then she's got something that's movable. Well, yeah, take it away. She'd take it away or put it in another position yeah, yeah. around here. Okay, cool. I suggest another bench here. Okay. And we need some kind of buffer. Okay. All right, so we need to, if we can, to diffuse the wind that comes through that window. It's, it's like, gonna... a, like a bit of a screen or something there. Something there, yeah. You know? If you come up with an idea, that'd be fantastic. Okay. Okay? Cool. Because I know you can, because, you know... I'm the man that can. You're the man that can, absolutely. Okay, well, I'll crack on with that. We can't really do much work up here because you're going to be cleaning this down and there's a lot of cutting of wood and things like that, so I'm going to pop downstairs. Okay. So if you need me, holler through the window, I will. okay? I'll holler very loudly. Good Thank luck. you. I'll see you in a bit. See you later. Take care. See you later. See you later, see you later Ray J. Right. Tools are over here. Yep. If you take that, you can do the window. No problem. And we'll, we'll do the scrubbing. Yep, that's that sounds fine. good. You must be very proud of your daughter because she's uh, very young and she's managed to get on the property ladder. That's quite rare yeah, for she's... youngsters these days. It was one thing she always wanted. She wanted to get her own place. From the time she left uni, she, uh, in uni in Plymouth, and she left Plymouth and come up this neck of the woods. Right. And how long has she lived here for now? She's been here nearly four years now. I get the impression that she's a very sociable person, and, um, she likes to entertain. She likes to have her friends around. She hasn't got a massive lot of friends, but the friends she's got, she likes to have them around in the summer entertaining and... And treat them well. And treat them well. So this is uh, probably the last part she needs to do now. Great, and what a great space to entertain a friend in. Yeah, definitely. Something she wa she wanted for a while. Colin, you're probably wondering why we're so working so hard scrubbing this. Yeah. Um, you might be thinking, well, why are we using a jet wash? Yes, I did wonder that. Well, the reason being is that you know it is a roof terrace. Yeah. And there could be a water issue. Now, if ah, we're flooding right. this with lots of water. There could be a leak somewhere, yeah. and we don't want it going down into the flat, flat below. Right, I think it's time for me to leave you, because I've no got problem. to see what AJ's getting on yeah. with. Down below, AJ's made a start on the first of his two benches, with a special extra feature. Hello, AJ. Hey, mate. How's, How's it going? going, mate? Yeah, good. Good. Good, thanks. I've decided to build a couple of sort of planters yeah. either side that the bench will lean against. Yeah. So I've kind of just finishing off this, I've sort of offset the wood Brilliant. here, and so yeah. I'm just using this as a marker, clamped it in there, measured up there, and I'm just screwing the last screw in on this one here. So I just thought either side, yeah. bench across the middle, and... Um, no, I love it. I mean, um, that's a bonus, because I wasn't expecting this, AJ. No. And to do that means that we've got two more planting opportunities. That's fantastic. It's what I do for you. I'm always thinking of you. Thank you very much. But there's more. AJ is full of surprises today. You could just make it all equilateral like that, but I actually quite like the idea of twisting that over. Yeah. And then, the, as you see, the second level... Yeah. And then you've got, you've got have this sort of zigzag yeah. pattern here. And then the top one, obviously, will stick out here, here, here and here. AJ, I love it. Is this going to be nice and light? Once this is made, you know, and then I make another one the other side, and then sort of a few slats all sort of screwed together, then mm. that's it. As long as um, it's, when it's up there, you're not, it, 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 there won't be, it won't be overbalanced. <laughs> okay. So it's all right, you know, right, it should be. <laughs> yeah, you can talk. <laughs> oh, maybe. As well as the two benches, AJ's also been tasked with building a windbreak for Amy's drafty aperture, and he's been thinking ahead. So how's the windbreak coming on, AJ? Got these here, which I've got to cut to size at some point. So yeah. like, you know, sort of five inches by one inch. Yeah. And I thought, we'll get some battens. Yeah. And then um, we can then have one in front of the batten, one behind, one the... so they're offset. I so like you've got that. gaps coming at, at an angle. Yeah, so the I, wind I like isn't just one big force. Yeah. It will still let light through as well. And that's a bonus. It's a bonus. That's isn't great. Because we want it so bright yeah. up there and lovely. Do you know what, AJ? I knew you'd come up with a good idea. No, put, it, put it there. For you, brother. For Thank you. you. Thank you. AJ, is there anything I can do to help you, mate? Oh, yes, yeah. Um, lead me to it. <laughs>
While Danny and the team get on with it, I'm taking Amy to visit a very swish outdoor space that I think will show her both how flexible and multi-purpose a small space can be and that gorgeous plants don't have to mean masses of work. Amy, I've brought you here to see a garden that I hope mm -hmm. will excite and inspire you. Perfect. Because you said you're just looking for a bit of inspiration at the minute. I am, yeah. Hopefully this will do the trick. Excellent. So what do you think of this garden? It's beautiful. That is beautiful. The fire pit's really, really nice and that bench actually is really quirky. And there are different sort of bits to the garden. The barbecue area over mm. here, lawn, seating area, patio. Is this the kind of thing you like? I would. It's, it just doesn't feel like you're where you are. So I think actually this would be a really nice sort of look. Oh, she's yeah. changed already. She's changed already. It doesn't look daunting. It's really, really nice. Let's go and test out that seating area. Definitely. As someone with a small garden and a very poor track record in keeping plants alive, I want Amy to see how well-chosen, great-looking plants can also be easy to look after. What are your first impressions then, Amy? As a non-gardener, self-confessed, is this something you like? Is it a bit intimidating? I don't think it's intimidating. I've never really thought about using just green plants. You know, not, I've always tried using flowers and then they've died really quickly. This just seems to be such like a nice, it has a ni nice feel to it. It doesn't look like I'll be able to kill too much. It looks really, <laughs> it looks really strong and hard wearing, yet almost tropical at the same time. It's Amy proof. It's Amy proof. Back at Amy's own outdoor space, the clean paving is positively glowing, and so are Danny's praises of his team. Do you know, this is amazing. I'm surprised that you've made such a difference. When I left you earlier, I didn't think you were going to get this clean. That's great. It's come up really well, Dan. A lot better than I thought. Danny's got a bright colour scheme in mind for jazzing up this dour-looking patio. So bright, in fact, you might want to get your sunnies on for this. Now, just look at these babies. They're really nice. Now, is this going to work or is this going to work? It's going to work. Yeah, it's going to work. It's going to work. The reason for these large pots is to add a bit of drama to this outside space. Rather than have lots of small pots, which aren't really going to make any impact on this space, I thought large pots would be far better. And we put some nice, toperized round balls in here. And that brings a bit of cohesion to this space. Now, one of the things that I noticed is that there are no holes in these pots. So it means they need to be drilled. Now the reason we put holes in the pots is to allow the water to come through. If we don't allow water to come through, these, there's a danger that these pots could fill up with rainwater and damage the roots of the plants. Three holes, bit of a triangle? No, just one, no, just one hole. We just want one hole in the middle here, AJ, on each pot. That would be absolutely brilliant. Okay, so, you know, with a pot this size, a 10 mil hole, just use a 10 mil drill bit to drill a hole in the middle, that's absolutely fine. <laughs> and it helps breathing as well. If I just put soil in here, um, and I don't protect the hole, this hole will get blocked. So what I'm going to do is put some crockery in there, some broken, maybe broken pots, some stones, anything like that, Put that around the hole before I put the compost in. That way, that will keep the hole free from being blocked. But Danny, where are you going to get those broken pots? Oh. I'm going to smash this pot. And the way I'm going to do it is by putting it in this rubble sack here. And that way, when I smash it, it's not, we're not going to have splinters everywhere. And I'm actually protecting myself and anyone that's in the vicinity from getting anything in their eyes. I think it's dead now. <laughs> <laughs> and there we have, that's all I need. One of these, just to cover the hole, to keep it unblocked. Simple as that. A smashing tip there, Danny. But time is ticking away and there's still no sign of any foliage. We need to get some plants into those pots. Oh, that feels good. I've been dying to do this all day. Nice to get a bit of compost between the old fingernails. Right, plant number one is ready to go in and it's a belter. 
Pittosporum Tom Thumb, an evergreen shrub. Isn't that an absolute beauty? Now you'll notice that it's green there, but that's the new growth, but they will soon turn a darker colour. An absolutely wonderful plant. Now I'm going to show you a little trick when potting, putting plants in pots. Take the plant out of the pot and just place the pot inside the larger one. Now I reckon I've got the level about right there. What I'm going to do now is fill the perimeter of this pot with compost. Not the pot itself, but go around the outside. So there we are. So now I can put my beautiful plant in that space. There we are. Ta-da! One potted pittosporum. How gorgeous is that? The reason I'm using this shape, this round shape, is to give a bit of formality to this garden, to this space. I think it will look absolutely fantastic. It's going to keep everything nice and neat and contemporary. Be very good for Amy, absolutely brilliant, because they do need very little looking after. I would suggest maybe giving it a trim, as I'm doing now, maybe two or three times a year. And that's all it needs. With some lime green pots and structural topiary, this bog standard terrace is starting to feel like a chic retreat. While Danny gets his hands dirty, back in the small suburban paradise on the other side of Basingstoke, I've arranged to meet its owner, Daryl, to ask him how he made his garden easy care and part of his home. Talk us through this space then, because this is almost an extension of your living room, isn't it? It is. We were looking for a, to have a grown-up space where we could sit out and entertain, where, where actually we, we could have friends round, where we could have a barbecue area. How high or low maintenance is this garden, Daryl? This is a very, very low maintenance garden, so really other than the odd weed popping up, which you just pull out, that's it. Probably in about sort of two to three years' time, we'd probably have to start shaping some of some of uh, some of the bushes as they grow. But uh, apart from that, it's just to sit out and sort of enjoy the garden. Then once or twice a week, sort of cut, sort of cut out of the freshly laid lawn. I noticed, Darrell, you've got a plant on wheels. Why is that on a trolley? Um, it's it's actually a very sort of heavy plant. It's actually a very very big pot, but it makes it very easy for us to move sort of um, around the patio. You can you use it for natural for, for natural shading. If you actually want more space, you can move it to a different for a, a different part different part of the garden. And presumably, if this wasn't your forever home, you could take it with you when you go without a massive amount of hassle. Yes. Yes. That's an idea that you could kind of pick up on, really, isn't yeah, it? It is. How did you come up with all these ideas, though? Because there's a lot going on, and you kind of said you would never think no. of something else. No. Well, we, we, actually, we actually started by sort of creating a um, storyboard where you literally, you know, you, you take images from websites, you, you, you cut out sort of pictures from uh, gardening um, magazines and, and things like that. You sort of put them all, all together. And then you end up with a complete sort of collage of different shapes and colours and textures. And it's just amazing when you've got it all on a, on a, on a single sheet of, sheet of paper, you suddenly see that you've, without even thinking about it, you've actually, you've actually picked themes about textures and colours, um, designs and lighting and, 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 and things like that. Have you ever done that for your garden? Not at all. Um, I just seem to be at a loss to my garden. Like Inside I've got lots of inspiration. I do what you've, mm. you've said, like I do mood boards and have a look in all different types of shops to, to get inspiration. But then outside it's just, I'm at a, I'm at a loss. And this is just, this is just brilliant. Whether you're starting a garden from scratch like Amy or transforming an existing patch like Daryl, this gorgeously green space employs a number of great ideas you could try on your own garden overhaul. Mood boards aren't just for interior decorating. Keep copies of pictures that inspire you, and you, like Daryl, will soon find patterns emerging of the garden looks you love. If you're not one for constant care, choose more evergreen shrubs and non-flowering plants. They can be easier to look after, but just as eye-catching. Experiment with garden design by moving furniture, pots and boxes around. Wheeled containers are especially handy. A small garden needn't become boring with a monthly mix-up. Back in Basingstoke, it's past two o'clock and the roof garden doesn't yet have a stick of furniture. A check on AJ's progress is in order and he's had an inspired idea. 
Because it can't be permanently fixed in place, he's combining the windbreak with a storage bench to anchor it. Hi, AJ. How's it going? A bit of a thought. This windbreaker... Yeah. You know, it's going to have to have something heavy on the bottom of it. Yeah. To stop the wind blowing it one way or the other. I've built this. This is going to be the second bench. If I put if I put a top on there and then a base in there, yeah, that, then we can have storage. It, you know, it's not going to go anywhere. AJ, I think that's a great idea because Amy has got some ugly storage unit upstairs, and this would be great as an alternative. <laughs> I can build it down here, and then she'll have to come down here and sit on it. Otherwise, yeah. So sure. we need to get it up there now and just finish off the construction. I'll go and get the troops, if you and could. we'll get going. Yeah. Brilliant. Thanks for that, AJ. Thank Cheers. You. I hope Jane and Colin are feeling strong today. Shifting this furniture's going to be fun. Top work there, team. Look how well the patches come up, AJ. Oh, brilliant, yeah. It's great, isn't it? They've been busy. They have been busy. Absolutely lovely. And, and clear all that away there and we'll push it up there. Yeah, yeah. And then just put a couple of screws in there and then it's all there. It's brilliant. Set. And the thing is, I mean, it's very well made. It kind of looks permanent, doesn't it? Yeah. So there's a sense of permanence about it. And what's lovely which, is that Amy which actually is wanted something like this. This Did is she? what she was talking about. Oh, right. Yeah. Now, in keeping with Amy's bright interiors, the garden furniture needs a bright and funky finish. Thank you. There's a bit of a squiggly line thing going up on over here with Colin's painting. Jane's absolutely fine, by the way. He's obviously done this sort of thing before. <laughs> the paint's migrated over here. Oh, Colin, you might have just ruined everything. Fortunately, we've got some de-squiggling tape. Just stick that on there. Colin can now paint up to this line here, produced by this tape, until his heart's content. While the team are going hammer and tongs, I want to find out just how hard Amy grafted to get herself a garden at all. Amy, talk me through your route into teaching because it wasn't very straightforward, was it? No, I did four years at university, but after that I thought it would be really simple to go and get a job. But actually it's really difficult and it took me, I think, over a hundred applications and my nan had to help me with stamps and envelopes to to get my applications out there. I didn't mind where I moved in the UK as long as I had a job. At the end of the day, I've done four years at university. There was no way I was going back home to not work. I really, really had to try hard. So you were willing to move anywhere in the country so that you could be a teacher and fulfil that dream? Yes, but when I found Hampshire, that's where it all fell into place and I've managed to get my first job quite quickly after that. A lot of hard work, you've got yourself your job. Yes. What about the home situation? At the beginning it was very difficult. I moved from Wales to Hampshire um, and luckily my auntie, who again is really supportive, um, let me stay with her for a few months to get my foot on, foot on, feet on the ground and to save up a little bit of money. And then I sort of rented um, a place. First of all I rented a room in somebody's house, then I rented my own place and I just thought renting, I was just throwing away my money so I thought right, I'm going to buy something and it just so happened that in Basingstoke they were doing a key worker scheme where if you were a teacher or a nurse, you know, somebody who had a, a key job, um, you could get on the property ladder quite easily. So you are in this part ownership scheme where you own part of it, you've yes. taken on a bit of a mortgage, but you also pay a bit of rent. Mm -hmm. And how does that work then? Will you own it eventually? Yeah, you can own as much as you want to. Um, I started off with a certain percentage and some people will probably keep that for the rest of their lives. Next year I'm hoping to take on more and within three years hopefully own the whole property outright. How important is it for you to be a homeowner? I just think it's really important. It's made me able to put a stamp on my place. I'm, I've got my personality in my apartment now and I'm not afraid to bring people back, you know, friends and family. We, we get to relax in a nice place that I'm not embarrassed about. Amy, the facts are you've worked very hard, you've been very dedicated, it's not been easy, you've got yourself into a career path, you've got yourself onto the property ladder. It, it is difficult though, it is a lot of hard work and you've just got to keep going and have the determination to succeed. I have lots of ideas for the future and you've just got to go with it. Well, hopefully something else you'll be shouting from the rooftops is how much you love your garden a little bit so. later yes. on. <laughs> right, let's go and get some bits okay. on this shopping list. 
Meanwhile, back at Danny's Academy of Roof Gardening... Dan, can you help me with the screen? I need to offer this up at the back. Of course I can. AJ has bagged himself top marks with that blinder of an idea, combining the second bench with the windbreak. I just thought we'd just come and test this out, eh? Yeah. Could do a yeah. little test. Yeah. I'm tired and... <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> right then, I'll tell you what. Yes. Joking aside. Joking aside. Show you, show you a little bit of the uh, surprise for this. Please. We can actually do with Colin's help as well. All right, Colin. Because I you... want you to test. Can you come over here, Colin? Yep. Can you pick it up with ease? Just. I tell you, Colin. Let me take this end. I'll yeah, take this. You know what? I'll take this end. It's very hard to move, isn't it? <laughs> yes. It is hard to it move, very especially heavy. for a single girl. Everything yeah, like that. Yeah. So. If you could just pick it up this end up here slightly yeah. and move it around, it'd be a lot easier, wouldn't yeah. it? So my idea, piece de resistance. <laughs> Wheels. <laughs> Wheels. Da, 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 da. We're going to go on that end. Pluto. Yeah. <laughs> Come here, Pluto. <laughs> Pluto. <laughs> Hello, Pluto. I'll tighten that up in a minute with a spanner. <laughs> oh. I'll get a spanner on that. It's done. It's I okay. With this all. Oh. If you'd like to stand over there and see now if it's straight. Absolutely fantastic. Good work, AJ. That looks AJ great. AJ looks really good. Time is marching on. With less than two hours left, this garden is in desperate need of more greenery. Greenery that can cope with a novice gardener. We've got some rosemary here. Lovely. I mean, they grow in any soil, yeah. and they grow on the side of hills in the Mediterranean. Yeah. So, really, they will tolerate anything. Yeah. Right? And we've got some mint. mint. And we'll put the mint in one part, and we'll put yeah. the rosemary in the other part. Yeah, so, you know, this is really not impossible to kill. Novice gardeners do often put their herbs in together, um, not really knowing what the characteristics of them are. I mean, most herbs are fine, but you've just got to be aware of you know, a herb like uh, mint, because it is a thug and it will spread. Um, so, and it'll grow anywhere, it'll come up in the cracks of your pavement if you're not careful. So, you know, you, you keep your herbs, your mint, make sure you keep it well contained. I mean, I can't stress that enough. Yeah. Amy used a lot of herbs oh, in she? cooking. Yes. Oh, brilliant. So this so, for her, it's going to be... Well, she's going to be blown away, I Oh, reckon. is she? So she was thinking of doing this anyway? She was. We were only discussing it last night. She was going to get some little pots and put her own herbs in. Oh, right. So, uh, yeah. Oh, that was a stroke totally of luck, then, wasn't it? Yeah. Totally Yeah. And it should fit as snug as a bug in a rug. Yep. And it does. Hey-ho. Yeah. With Danny in charge of the foliage, Amy and I want to find other low-maintenance means of decorating her terrace. I've brought her to a vintage home and garden shop where upcycling is the order of the day. Lisa, there is so much to look at outside. Oh, always, always. <laughs> That's before we've even got in. This is Amy. Hi, Hi nice, to, Hi, meet nice you. to meet you. Amy has a roof terrace. Okay. We have a list which is basically lanterns and candles. Wow. Is there anything you can recommend for Amy that would look nice on a roof terrace? Yeah. We've got lights that you can have. Candles, mm -hmm. some candles, tea lights, little earthenware pots you can put candles in. So whatever your style is, we can incorporate. Lisa, how much of what you do is about upcycling and recycling? We do loads of upcycling. We recycle crates, we recycle garden stuff, furniture, so a massive proportion. People want old now and because it's quality, but they want to upcycle it to make it modern, so yeah. I've always assumed that this would be quite expensive to do, mm. sort of buying the furniture and then quite time consuming to do it. Is it isn't true? though, okay. no. You can go to your local, you know, recycling place, mm -hmm. a dump, charity shop, pick up furniture, pick up old bits of garden stuff, paint them, um, distress them or not. So and you can do it really cheaply. A tin of paint costs under twenty pounds and you can get so many pieces, so don't worry that it's going to be expensive. You wanted a space for entertaining. How important is lighting? Lighting's really important because there isn't any light really in on my roof terrace, so okay. it'd be quite nice for candles and lots of sort of natural, quite nice lighting, not too candles harsh. Candles will give you that ambient lighting. Yes. So when you're there with friends, lighting's there, but it's not in your face. So glassware, painted glassware, 
we do lovely lanterns you stick into pots so you're on a roof mm -hmm. we can paint pots and then stick the lanterns in lead us to the lanterns i think slowly amy is starting to be reassured and believe that her outside space can be as exciting and interesting as her inside space Back at the garden, Amy's outside space is about to get a big lift and another blast of colour with one of Danny's most novel ideas yet. Here we go. Very intriguing. It's wet room flooring, oh. made from vinyl. That is one hell of a colour, isn't it? Let's look at this. Wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's superb. <laughs> the reason why we've gone for the shower flooring, it's non-slip. So when you come out here, if it's been raining or stuff like that, there's a bit of water left on it, you won't be slipping anywhere. Nice and safe as well. And the other great thing is when she moves, she can roll it up and take it with her. That is That's awesome. Really yeah. That's oh, my really gosh. Good. It's like everything else here. She no. just packs up. Yeah, pack it up. And takes away. Great. Which is really good. Yeah. Can have someone just standing on this. Yes. Well, no, you two just want to stand on this and then we'll Both lift this. this. And we'll, yeah. Yeah, one one's the corner, one the other. Yeah. It's lovely, isn't it? I would say it needs to come over a good six inches if you're going to have a middle with that. Uh, so if you've got the lamp there, centralise this with the lamp, centralise that uh, bench. Can't we centralise it with the slabs? So it's equal distance from that fourth slab. That's this one. See well, what I mean? Then whatever, the bench, whatever yeah. Danny. You want to do it weirdly, then <laughs> fine. <laughs> we'll just roll it out first. Just roll it out, yeah. <laughs> Up there. Meet the measure. Wow, there we go. If you look, look far and far away, I think you can probably see the Eiffel Tower. Do you want to centralise it with that? <laughs> <laughs> now you're talking. Still at the vintage garden shop, Amy and I are searching for the light in an Aladdin's cave of upcycled wonders. For somebody on a budget, let's make our own lanterns using glass jars. So we. We have these. Um, this is one that we've painted just to show people, and it's painted with chalk paint. Um, it gives it a lovely texture. You can distress it back so you get the light reflecting through it, and um, it's really inexpensive. You can put wire around them, mm -hmm. hang them okay. as well, so you've got them at different levels, mm -hmm. different sizes, and it just gives you something unique because nobody will have the same as you. So if you paint those, does the light still come through? Yes, it does. And you can just put a tea light, something like this, into the bottom, mm -hmm. and that will give you a beautiful light, or you can put slightly larger pillar candles in. Right, so shall we get loads of these? Yes. You grab any more you want. Let's get them to the counter. Amy and I leave with armfuls of potential lanterns, which is just as well, because dusk is now only an hour away, and Danny and the team are furiously fighting the clock. But will they finish in time? Is that her back? Is that is like. Amy back? Yes, Amy's back. Amy's what? back. Amy's back. Could you do me a favour? Could you stall her? Yeah, yeah. I mean, take her shopping, take her down a pub, <laughs> take her to a club, do anything. No problem. Just, just, I'll just stall her. Now. I'll sort that out now. She's got to do a U-turn. Okay. Well stalled, Danny, but I'm still having a sneak preview. Just as soon as you finish planting up AJ's bench planters. Hello! Hi. Oh. oh my <laughs> word! Hello, Helen. This is amazing. Can I sit here? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Oh, I love this space. Do you like it? I think it? this is great. Oh, brilliant. The one thing Amy said all day is, oh, I want to take the outside and the inside and merge them together, make it an extension. All right. Oh, and the herbs. Yeah. Is she going to keep them alive? Are they Amy proof? They we hope we they're hope Amy so. proof. This rosemary. It grows in the Mediterranean, and it grows in any soil, and it grows on the side of hills, and you know it gets battered by winds, and it's perfectly happy. She's got so to work quite so hard to kill that. She's got to work hard to kill that. So if it does all right there, it should do okay here. I've brought a contribution. Oh, okay. Amy picked them. There are lots of different jars in here. Okay. That will hopefully work as lanterns. So would you like me to paint these? I've got another job for you, Helen. Right. It's that table over there. Can you paint a stripe on it for me? I think I can manage that. Lead the way. OK, over here. Don't you trust me to paint outside the lines? <laughs> <laughs> so this is Amy's existing table? Yes. That we're giving a new lease of life? Yeah, absolutely. OK. So this is another form of upcycling. 
Which colour would you like? Oh, I don't know. What do you reckon? What would you choose? I think the blue's a bit more... Yeah? Hello. All right, we'll do the blue then. And Amy is quite a... Hello sort of girl. Yeah. Brilliant. I'll catch up with you later. Okie doke. This is a really cheap way to give an old table a new lease of life. With a bit of luck, Amy will think this is a brand new table. Yeah, these are really cool, aren't they? They're brilliant. I think she's chosen very well. Oh, I like this. Oh, that's, that's good. Nice. And that kind of goes in with the theme that we've got going on. That's nice. Yeah, that's great. Absolutely brilliant. Would you like to paint some of these? Yeah. I thought perhaps you can paint these the other colour okay. that we've got. With daylight fading, Amy's pots still need to be positioned. And when it's finally time to down tools, the terrace has been completely transformed. This morning, Amy's garden wasn't a garden at all. Just a bare paved box, a few sad containers, and a rather ugly storage box, all at the mercy of a punishing easterly wind. In only one day, it's undergone a miraculous rebirth at the hands of Danny and the team. Amy was bound by the terms of her lease. With no permanent alterations allowed, she was at a loss as to where to start. Now, thanks to a movable design, with some inventive planting and furnishing, it's a chic and contemporary urban retreat to be proud of. Instead of lots of little mismatched containers, the use of a few dramatic feature plants in citrus bright pots makes a striking impact. Combining bespoke storage space with garden furniture is the perfect solution for small spaces. And the addition of the screen gives Amy a gorgeous but functional way to diffuse those drafts. Herbs grown in containers are both handy and hardy for a city terrace, and they might just survive Amy's newfound gusto for gardening. The dull and dirty slabs have been spruced up, and Danny's ingenious use of this eye-catching vinyl bathroom flooring brings the whole space together. By bringing indoor ideas outside, Danny has not only created a colourful, stylish roof terrace with an abundance of character, he's also given Amy a portable garden that can move with her wherever her life takes her next. It only remains to be seen if this design gets top marks from teacher. Oh my god, Danny! Come right in. This is your new garden. What do you think? It's just bright and just lovely. Really, really nice. Just didn't imagine it to be anything like this, and it's it's just brilliant. It's beautiful. It matches the house, and it's got every single colour that's in my house, from like the greens, the blues, the pink. I love it. Yeah. Just can't stop smiling. Yeah. I, I just I just didn't imagine it to be this this nice. I'm loving the pots. I never would have been never would have thought about big pots. Just, I've always gone for sort of lots of little pots, but actually just five bright pots really does make this just so much nicer and brighter. Okay. I love this. That's awesome. Is it? Yeah. So it's so a stops the wind. Yeah, stops the wind. Storage. Your dad might put a few of his drinks in there. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. It's right, my pleasure. And look. Got your herbs. <laughs> <laughs> We've been debating whether they're Amy proof or not. They are. They've got to be. They have to be. Thank you, Soil. Yeah. Water every week. Yeah, every week. <laughs> Once a week on a Saturday. She's changed. She was already talking earlier today what? about what else she's going to grow in here. You've started a new garden. Oh, great. Really? Well, this will give you a great start, won't yeah, it? Yeah, this is fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Mum and Dad have worked hard. Yep. Thank you as well to yeah. do that. I'm just glad you like it. Yeah. Thank you. Danny, another job well yeah. done. Yeah. Thank you. Well done, Amy. Enjoy yeah. your new instant garden. I will. Thank you very much. Amy wanted an easy maintenance roof garden with character where she could wind down after a hard day's work. With this design, Danny and the team have created a roll-up-and-go removable wonder, bursting with colour, where this young teacher can really relish her free time. Join us next time for another Instant Garden.
are a few sights more satisfying than a beautiful garden. But what do you do if your outdoor space isn't quite so picture perfect and you're short on time? Well, meet the instant gardener. Ta da! Danny Clark is an expert at transforming gardens. Here's my plan I'm going to rejuvenate this garden. Each time, our gardening guru will show you how to create gorgeous garden makeovers. That's the art of garden design, delegation. Each transformation will be packed with brilliant ideas and tips. It makes it easier to cut through. To help you get to grips with your own outdoor space. It does feel unnatural, but take your time. With his magical ideas. These flowers will look like they're floating in amongst the grasses. And advice on spending wisely on a budget. That's why Danny makes me bring a list. OK. Oh, my word. This is amazing. And because he's the instant gardener, everything you see will happen in just one day. Oh, my God. That looks so much better. This time we're in the Hampshire town of Basingstoke. Originally a medieval market town, the population of modern Basingstoke has rocketed to nearly 90,000. With many high-rise apartment blocks and busy roads, space for a garden in this bustling town is a hard-won and cherished commodity. In town, space is at a premium, so gardens aren't always where you might expect to find them. Today's outdoor space is a few stories up, and it's left its owner, who's taking her first steps on the property ladder, more than a little bit daunted. I don't want to stand on that, it's too good. Hello! Hi. I'm Helen. Hi, nice to meet you. I'm Amy. Thanks for having Hello. us. I love your doormat. Thank you. It's <laughs> cute. Amy Joliffe is a 27-year-old primary school teacher from Wales who has recently settled in Basingstoke. After a long and demoralising battle to find her first teaching job, Amy now works very long hours. Like many other key workers, she's also struggled to get her foot on the property ladder. But finally, Amy has been able to buy a part share in her first home, a new build flat in the suburbs. However, to do that, she's had to sacrifice the idea of a dream garden. In fact, she's been lucky to get what she has, and to transform it will be a tall order. Amy's so-called garden is in fact a roof terrace. Measuring around 24 square metres, it's only an eighth of the size of the average UK garden. The terrace is paved with bog-standard concrete paving stones, which, according to Amy's lease, we can't alter in any permanent way. It's bounded by glass partitions with brushed metal railings and brick walls on two sides, which, again, we can't modify permanently. There's also a curious window-like opening. It's got a great view, but creates a terrific draught. Amy's desperate to turn her terrace into a cosy, relaxing outdoor room, but so far all she's managed to do is install this rather ugly storage unit and plant a few pots. It's a blank canvas and it has some restrictions, but there's loads we can do to turn this terrace into the talk of the town. How are you? Good. What a great little space this is. It's a great space, especially on a day like today. Definitely. And how long have you lived here? I've lived here for nearly four years. So is this a flat that you own outright? Um, I part buy, part rent. I'm on the professional scheme that came out about four years ago. And I own sort of just over 50% of the property and I pay rent to a company who own, who own the rest of it. So is the aim to own it outright eventually? It is. And um, within the next three years, I'm hoping to own 100%. What are the limitations of making over a roof garden and one that you don't yet fully own outright? I think it's the structural issues. We can't drill into the outside walls. You can't sort of get out onto the roof. And there's some health and safety issues there. The stuff we put in here can't be too heavy. Otherwise, the guy below will have a load of um, ceiling on his head. Having walked through your house, it's immaculate and gorgeous and very colourful and there's a lot of character in there. That's not reflected out here, though, without being rude, is no. it? No, it's not. It's very bland. It, it doesn't say me at all. I've managed in the last sort of three and a half years to really make my home bright, colourful, represent me okay. completely. 
this isn't. So we need to put a bit of you into this space, you don't do. we? Yes. Now I want to be able to bring friends and family out to this area and enjoy a barbecue and have just a nice meeting place rather than being stuck in, in the living room. Daddy, this is a blank canvas, but it's a roof terrace. So there are positives and negatives. How are you feeling about transforming this space? I've got a big confession to make. I've never done a roof garden before. This is going to be a first for me. So, Amy, wish me luck. Good luck. Are you green-fingered? Do you do much gardening? Not really. No, I attempt I've attempted and ended up killing everything. Yeah, I hadn't right. noticed, Amy. No, I hadn't not noticed. At all. <laughs> <laughs> everything just dies. It doesn't matter how hard I okay. try. I am quite a busy person. I start early in the morning and I do sometimes finish eight o'clock at night. Okay. When I come home I enjoy just sort of sitting down and just relaxing and I do actually forget about watering the plants sometimes. You're dedicated in the classroom. How would your friends describe your dedication in the garden? Yeah, that they think it's hysterical. Um, I had, I planted something just behind you and for the last year thought it was a lavender plant and then got told it was bluebells. <laughs> oh. So, and that's the extent of my, my gardening skills. I thought I was doing something right, thought it was a perfect flower. Yep, so I'm the laughing stock of my friends, I think, when it comes to gardening. Well, you'll be the laughing stock no more, because what we'll do, we'll put some plants in here. There's no such thing as no maintenance, but there is low maintenance. We'll get out of the way, let you crack on. Help is on its way. OK, and I've just got something for you, Helen, the usual. Oh, yeah. So, a little shopping list, so if you can go enjoy yourself and um, I'll catch up with you later. While I whisk Amy away for a bit of R&R, &R, that's retail and research, Danny has only 10 hours to transform her terrace. Basically, the outline has got to remain as it is. So we can do stuff within the walls, but we can't fix anything to the walls, for example. So anything we put in here has to be freestanding. Now, a very good design tip here is to look on the inside, see what you've got on the inside of your house and try and project that to the outside. I've been inside, I've had a look around and one of the first things I've noticed is that Amy likes bright colours. So I'm going to try and replicate that in this space. We've got to be very careful with the flooring because of the restrictions. Um, we can't paint it. We can clean it, which is good, so and that will make a huge difference. And once cleaned, Perhaps we'll put some sort of bright coloured matting down. For me, these small pots are a no-no. So we want to do something that's high impact. Maybe instead of lots of small pots, have maybe two or three large pots. I wouldn't make it too messy by having lots of different varieties. Less is more. So I'd be inclined just to put one variety of plant in each pot. Chopri, I mean, that comes to mind. Maybe an interesting shape, maybe a sphere or an oblong, something like that. The window, although it's great for viewing, it's a bit of a wind tunnel. So what we want to do is find a way of diffusing the wind, just slowing it down. Furniture-wise, again, we can't fix anything to the wall, so everything has to be freestanding. We'll put a bench over there and paint it so that it matches the flooring and in turn that will match what's going on inside Amy's flat and perhaps a bench over here and likewise that will be painted. Now the main advantage that we've got here because nothing's going to be fixed to this space so really this is an outside room which she can roll up and take with her. There's no hardcore digging to be done here. All it is is an insulation and you know what? I know just the man. Handyman AJ is on the case as always, and he's going to have his work cut out with all the furniture Danny's planning. Plus, Amy's mum and dad, Jane and Colin, have come all the way from Wales to help their daughter transform her roof space. Hello. Hi. Hello, Jane. Hello, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. All right, so what I need you to do is to scrub this patio area. Yeah. OK? Yeah. Um, and the glass, if yeah, that's OK. Fine. Yeah, no problem. And uh, AJ, I've got a job for you, mate. I'm not scrubbing. I know you're not scrubbing. <laughs> oh. I would then ask you to scrub. That's all right. Then. But I need you to construct a couple of benches for me. Okay. If that's okay. Yeah, that's it. Sounds now, good. Now I want a bench in this on this wall here. Okay. About a meter and a half wide, but I like it to be quite deep. Okay. So maybe half a meter deep. Yeah. 
and it's going to have to be standalone, isn't it? Because we, we can't drill into these walls, can Absolutely, we? Absolutely, because there's rules and regulations here and we can't touch the walls. So if it can be standalone, which would be great. Okay. And that would be great for Amy because then she's got something that's movable. Well, yeah, take it away. She'd she take away or put it in another position yeah, yeah. around here. Okay, cool. I suggest another bench here. Okay. And we need some kind of buffer. Okay. Right, so we need to, if we can, to diffuse the wind that comes through that window. It's, it's like, gonna... a, like a bit of a screen or something there. Something there, yeah. You know? If you come up with an idea, that'd be fantastic. Okay. Okay. Cool. Because I know you can, because, you know. I'm the man that can. You're the man that can, absolutely. Okay, well, I'll crack on with that. We can't really do much work up here because you're going to be cleaning this down. And there's a lot of cutting of wood and things like that. So I'm going to pop downstairs. Okay. So if you need me, holler through the window, I will. okay? I'll holler very loudly. Good Thank luck. you. I'll see you in a bit. See you later. Take care. See you later. See you later, Ray. See you later Ray J. Tools are over here. Yep. If you take that, you can do the window. No problem. And we'll we'll do the scrubbing. Yep. That's that sounds fine. good. You must be very proud of your daughter because she's um, very young and she's managed to get on the property ladder. That's quite rare. Yeah. For she's... youngsters these days. It was one thing she always wanted. She wanted to get her own place. From the time she left uni, she, uh, in uni in Plymouth, and she left Plymouth and come up this neck of the woods. Right. And how long has she lived here for now? She's been here nearly four years now. I get the impression that she's a very sociable person, and, um, she likes to entertain. She likes to have her friends around. She hasn't got a massive lot of friends, but the friends she's got, she likes to have them around in the summer, entertaining and... And treat them well. And treat them well. So this is uh, probably the last part she needs to do now. Great, and what a great space to entertain a friend in. Yeah, definitely. Something she wa she wanted for a while. Colin, you're probably wondering why we're so working so hard scrubbing this. Yeah. Um, you might be thinking, well, why are we using a jet wash? Yes, I did wonder that. Well, the reason being is that you know it is a roof terrace. Yeah. And there could be a water issue. Now, if ah, we're flooding right. this with lots of water. There could be a leak somewhere, yeah. and we don't want it going down into the flat below. flat below. Right, I think it's time for me to leave you, because I've no got problem. to see what AJ's getting on yeah. with. Down below, AJ's made a start on the first of his two benches, with a special extra feature. Hello, AJ. Hey, mate. How's, How's it going, going, mate? Yeah, good. Good. Good, thanks. I decided to build a couple of sort of planters yeah. either side that the bench will lean against. Yeah. So I've kind of just finishing off this. I've sort of offset the wood Brilliant. here. And so yeah. I'm just using this as a marker, clamped it in there, measured up there, and I'm just screwing the last screw in on this one here. So I just thought either side, yeah. bench across the middle, and... Um, no, I love it. I mean, um, that's a bonus, because I wasn't expecting this, AJ. No. And to do that means that we've got two more planting opportunities. That's fantastic. It's what I do for you. I'm always thinking of you. Thank you very much. But there's more. AJ is full of surprises today. You could just make it all equal actual like that, but I actually quite like the idea of twisting that over. Yeah. And then, the, as you see, the second level... Yep. And then you've got, you've got this sort of zigzag yeah. pattern here, and then the top one, obviously, will stick out here.